is from Simon Vashan Berry uh, in relation to facial recognition. The use of facial recognition by the King's Cross Central Limited Partnership in the King's Cross development was raised with me last month. I, I then wrote to the Chief, Executive, the Chief Executive to express my concern. I also asked that he engage with both my Deputy Mayor for Planning, Regeneration and Skills, Jules Pipe, as he develops the Public London Charter and the Information Commissioner's Office. The CEO replied, setting out the current situation, that a previous facial recognition system had been in place and in operation on the site, which has been replaced, but that the King's Cross Central Limited Partnership now has no plans to introduce facial recognition on the estate. At the same time, uh, Sir Member Berry received a written answer to a Mayor's question about the exchange of images between private sector organisations and the Met for use in facial recognition. This was sent from MOPAC to the Met for a detailed reply and MOPAC were assured that no such exchange had taken place. We now know that this information was wrong and the Met have apologised for this. A local agreement was in place, meaning, the images, uh, meaning, uh, big pardon, meaning that images were exchanged between 2016 and 2018. A revised answer was provided to uh, Slim Member Berry on the 4th of September. Chair, I've asked the Met to assure me that no other agreements of this type were or are in place. I expect to receive the report of this work later this month. The Met have also written to all BCU commanders, making it clear there should be no local agreements on the sharing of data or local use of life facial recognition. Thank you, Chair. Um, so firstly, uh, Mr Mayor, I'd, I'd like to thank you for the uh, apology that came with the revised answer and by email from your Deputy Mayor um, about the serious inaccuracy that occurred with my Mayor's question. Uh, that's very much appreciated. Uh, my submitted question here today, I had planned to have quite a wide-ranging discussion with you about human rights, but I think given what's happened, this is a bit of casework that I should discuss now. So my first question, and I ask this because the Police and Crime Committee discussed facial recognition with the Met the day before the new information was published, is when did you find out that the answer you had given me was wrong? Straight away, as soon as I discovered it was wrong, I wrote to you, I think, the same day or literally maybe the day afterwards, but straight away. So you found out the day after the Police and Crime yeah, Committee yeah. as uh, well? Uh, uh, yeah, we, I, I'll give you the exact timelines, but it would have been, as soon as I found out, I straight away got in touch with you. The exact time would yeah, be useful, yeah. just to, to make sure I've got the timeline correct yeah, yeah. on that. Um, my second question is about how I was given the wrong answer to my question. And I assume your office and MOPAC have processes and inquiry processes to prevent this. How did this answer fail those checks? So what happens is the Mayor's Office of Police and Crime asked the Met Police Service for a briefing. They provide the briefing. The Mayor's Office of Police and Crime then provide it to uh, me. I think in this example what happened was the uh, local information taking place between the local BCU and in this case King's Cross wasn't passed up to the people who passed the information back to the Mayor's Office of Police and Crime. And that's one of the reasons why uh, the Met Police apologised. Uh, but also uh, I've asked for a report from uh, the MPS and I can't see any reason why I want to share that with uh, you once I get that report because I think what's, what's keen and I think uh, this is why it's, 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 it's uh, welcome the MPS apology and them doing this report that I've asked for is if there are any procedures that need improvement for example if people hire up don't know what's going on local or locally that's a problem but the good news is that the, uh, uh, the MPS have written to all BCUs to make sure they're aware there should be no sharing of, uh, of facial recognition with uh, private contractors. That's useful to know. I mean, the fact that they are still writing to local forces and, and your update to me does imply there is more to come. You've promised a further update to assembly well, I think we need members. to find out. I think the short answer is we don't know, but I want the reassurance, as, as I'm sure Londoners do as well. Can you confirm the answer to my question is still incomplete and you'll provide further updates on the question as well? The answer to your question is accurate at the time of writing, but it may well change as we get more information uh, from the report I've asked or from the Met Police Service. Okay, just to make sure a full answer is on the database in the end would be useful. Yeah, I'll make sure, I'll make sure, I've, 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 I'm happy to, if, if there's an interest, to, to copy in uh, assembly members because I appreciate Londoners will be concerned about how the public realm is dealt with. Absolutely. Um, so far in your investigations, do you know of any further incidences that the Met has uncovered? Just to be clear, there's no investigation from me. I've asked the MPS for a report in relation to what went wrong, what's going on, and they'll provide the report. Once I get the report from the MPS, as I said, I can't see a reason why that shouldn't be shared with uh, members of the Assembly. 
Uh, in respect of King's Cross, in response to the BBC, the British Transport Police say they handed over a watch list relating to crime and antisocial behaviour, which we assume means um, persistent begging. Um, I suspect this is the same case for the Met. So can you tell me what kinds of people were on the watch list that was supplied to our journal at King's Cross? I simply don't know. Uh, that's, one of the, that's one of the things I've asked for. I mean, the, the, the chronology is uh, I responded to the Mayor's question uh, and then subsequently was told, in fact, there had been, which said there had been no sharing. I was subsequently told there actually may have been sharing, which is why I corrected the answer to you and apologised and asked for a report. Once I've got the report, I'll be able to, to let you know um, the substance. I suspect, just, just looking in from out, it was probably crime prevention advice, but I just don't know. Okay, I mean, I ask this because, I mean, we know that the public only ever supports the use of facial recognition in limited circumstances and only for serious crimes. Mm. Um, and begging and being homeless is not a serious crime. Well, that's an assertion. The position is, I mean, the, the, the public needs to be cons give consent. My view is very simple, that the two biggest objections would be uh, public not giving consent, and there's informed consent and there's expressed consent. Uh, and secondly, what happens to the database, uh, who, is, who is shared with themselves. Those are the two biggest issues. You'll be aware of a separate legal case taking place and there's going to be a appeal taking place. There are other issues about the lack of regulation mm. and technology advancing. There's other concerns about the use of this by the private sector. There's other concerns about how the public realm is policed, inverted commas, small p, by private developers. And that's one of the reasons why, for the first time, uh, we have a situation where City Hall, through the Deputy Mayor for Planning, is looking into a public uh, you know, uh, yep. land charter, no, I'm well aware of that which word. is really important. Um, this kind of local inconsistency within the police in terms of data sharing is also something we saw with the gang's matrix. And my real concern here, and why I tabled my original question, is whether you and MOPAC are being proactive enough and curious enough and getting ahead of these kinds of human rights issues before the Met stumbles into making mistakes like this. I mean, it was my MQ that drew this out, but isn't it a question you should have been asking? Well, to be fair, we've been lobbying the government for some time now. One of the concerns both the Commissioner... This is in terms of what the Met is doing. Actually. Both in terms of the Commissioner and also in terms of the Department of Police and Crime and myself is, is lobbying the government to keep abreast with the advances taking place in technology. It is a fact. Uh, many of us who have mobile phones of a certain type use facial recognition in relation to unlocking our uh, phone. We give consent uh, to do so. So the technology is there and the, and the uh, lobbying from the government, uh, lobbying to the government from the police has been, we need regulation yeah. to let us know how we should be using this. In the, in the absence of regulation, what the police have done in London, unlike other police forces, is have pilots informing the public these pilots are taking place, whether it's at Carnival, whether it's outside the Cenotaph during Remembrance Day, so the public are aware of this and making sure they test the pilots and, and aren't just rolling this out. So that's the appropriate way for a police service to behave, but the, the key issue is for the government to pass the regulation and change the laws. I the agree. other big um, issue is the number of commissioners. We've got a Mr. commissioner. Well, Very yeah, sorry, I'm out of time. Um, I am looking forward to your further update to my written question, and thank you for answering. <coughs> Assembly Member Hall.